evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Yes, we're still thanking God for his goodness and his mercy toward us. Welcome to another Wednesday night live Bible study where God meets us always in a very special way. Welcome again, Wednesday night live Bible study. Invite someone to join in with you. Invite someone to uh, uh, join our Wednesday night live. You can like and share. Call your family members. Text them. Let them know that West Urban Church of God in Christ is live and on the air. And tonight as we go into this worship tonight, let's pray before we go into the scriptures. But I'm so glad to be in the land of the living one more time. Uh, one more time, one more time. It's so good to be in the service one more time. Father, we thank you tonight for your choice blessings you've allowed us to enjoy. And we pray tonight as we go into your word, you will bless your people. Give us what to say and how to say it. That will encourage them and empower them to stand in the evil day. And we thank you and ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen again. Well, tonight, uh, we're going to the word of the Lord, if you will. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles out. And let's go to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I want to talk about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Or if you please, the purpose of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the purpose of the Holy Ghost or some call it the Holy Spirit. When you get it, say, I got it. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And it says in the hearing, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. I'm going to use for again, the thought tonight is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the Holy Spirit. When I read the scripture, I think about the Holy Spirit. And what it means to us when we talk about believers in Christ Jesus, what is the Holy Spirit? Uh, what is his purpose? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Uh, what's the function of the Holy Spirit? Uh, when does one get the Holy Spirit? Well, we see Jesus here uh, being baptized. And as he comes out of the water, uh, he's baptized by John the Baptist. Uh, he proclaims, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. Notice something. The Spirit of the Lord, is. he talks about the Spirit. Jesus himself was God. He was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all at one time. And yet he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Well, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Ghost really is the executive uh, of the Trinity or the administrator. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all three dwell bodily where within the Godhead. So God is simply God the Father, He's God the Son, and He's God the Holy Spirit. And yet, uh, Peter, uh, after preaching on the day of Pentecost, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter declares, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus, for the remission of or for forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That means the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is not for sinners. The Holy Ghost is a gift to believers. 
Hear me what I say loud and clear. It's a gift for the believers. Peter says, repent, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission or for the forgiveness of your sins, and then you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost comes as a gift to the believers. When one receives Christ initially, he comes in. Christ comes in and indwells them. Then it's necessary for that person who's just come to Christ to have something that will keep them and give them power. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 26, but the comforter, or if you let me use this word, uh, the Pericles or the helper, that word comforter, helper, the Holy Spirit will come, which is the Holy Ghost, the comforter or the helper. He helps our infirmity, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Again, you see, he talks about the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Then he says, whom the Father, who is God, will send where? In my name. There you see the Trinity. The comforter of the Holy Spirit, the Father God, who will send it in his name. In Jesus' name. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. He shall teach you what? All things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have told unto you. So we see the Holy Ghost serves as a comforter. It serves as a keeper, as a helper, and is designed for believers who accept Christ as their Savior. It's the gift of God to the believer. Now look at uh, John chapter 14 and 26 in the English Standard Version. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, whom the Holy Father will send, in my name, he will teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance. What things? Things I have told you. Things I have shared. Now, let me pause for a minute. You can't get anything to come to your remembrance unless you've already heard it before. People say, I'm just going to let God speak to my mind. You need to read something that when the Holy Ghost kicks into your memory, when you're going through a test or a trial, if you read it, if you pray and listen to God, he'll bring those things back to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost is a comforter, is a keeper. Now, let me give you some things. And If you look at the scriptures, uh, Luke chapter 14, there's a list of things that we shall or should be doing when the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Let me show you something. The Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's what Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. What spirit? The same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. The same spirit that raised up Christ. That's the same spirit that was in the beginning. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, he said, let us make man. In the beginning, that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. That's the spirit that Jesus says is upon him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Notice something. It's upon me. For he has what? He has given me the authority and the power and the anointing to preach. To preach the gospel. Notice something. He's anointed now because he's what? Anointed. The Holy Ghost comes to anoint you. Anointing means to be set aside for a special work. Anoint. You are smeared by God's presence. He's anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me before because he has what? Anointed me. You can't operate in ministry whether you're a preacher, a missionary, a singer, a lay person, Sunday school teacher, youth worker, you can't work effectively in ministry unless you are what? Anointed. 
It has anointed me because he had anointed me. He said, well, in Jesus Christ, the anointed one, yes, but he came in the flesh. And he went through all of the channels to let us know that as a man, we can still operate in God's authority, even in this flesh. So in the fleshly nature that Jesus took on, because he wanted man to see that he was God and man, he wasn't some supernatural hero. This was not something so far-fetched, but he came in the form of a man. And he went through everything that we have gone through. He was tested, tried, and now he says, I'm anointed. Why? Number one, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. That's your job. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is not to just have church, dance, jump and shout, run around the church, and speak in some kind of tongue. I'll be back, I'll be coming back there next minute. There are no tongues. Those tongues are something that we really love. I want to speak in tongues. Well, tongues is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is power. Tongues is one sign of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we get caught up in the, the tongues and we miss the power. So we are to preach the gospel, the good news, to the poor. That's our job. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, in verse 8, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. Holy Ghost saint. Let me tell y'all something. If anybody loves to dance and shout, I do. I love to have church. That's me. I'll meet you at the church building. I'll be there early. But we got to learn something. The Holy Ghost is not just for us to run around and shout and speak in tongues among ourselves. You know, there's a time when God moves in the service and the Holy Ghost is moving and the power of God is moving and the church is being blessed. People are being blessed. They're going up in tongues. But any time a service is interrupted by the Holy Spirit and someone utters tongues, there needs to be interpretation. Paul says, if not, then speak, at, speak in tongues at home. I'm down somebody's alley right now. Some of y'all love to speak in tongues and be seen. And you go sit down. You done spoke in tongues for 10 minutes. Then you go sit down. If God ain't in it, there's no interpretation. Tongues are for the edifying of you. And if God wants a message to come from your tongues, he will send the tongues. He will interrupt the service. The flow of the Spirit will flow because the Bible says, the spirit of prophet is subject to what? The spirit of a prophet. It, it'll be subject. A spiritual leader will know when God is speaking through tongues. And somebody will interpret. If it's not interpreted, then that's in self. And somebody's in self. God never sends his tongues without an interpreter. So don't get wrapped up on the tongues. Because on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they spoke in other tongues. Those were not unknown tongues. Those were other tongues. Unknown, unknown tongues is for you to be edified as God ministers to you. Come on, in the spirit realm. I know we get caught up in everybody want to speak in tongues, ba 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 sha, everybody's all. But tongues are designed for a purpose. He said, I'd rather that you prophesy than to speak in uh, tongues. Now, tongues is one of the signs of the Holy Ghost. It is not the Holy Ghost. It's one of the signs. Notice he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in one scripture, he said, they repented of their sins and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. God urges in the tongues. So our job is to what? Preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. Next, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. If you learn something tonight, tongues is designed to be uttered to heal the brokenhearted. Heal the brokenhearted. Heal the wounded. Heal those who are downtrodden. 
Heal those who are defeated and beat down and don't have a sense of direction. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Do you know men's hearts are broken today? They're broken from relationships. They're broken from pain. Perhaps the lifestyle they've been living, they're broken. And our job, the purpose of the Holy Ghost is to heal brokenhearted men, women, boys, and girls. The Holy Ghost has power. That's why on the day of Pentecost, God used tongues to witness. He used tongues as a way to get the gospel out. I call it the miracle on Pentecost. All those thousands of people who came from miles around and came to the great feast of Pentecost, they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached in their own native language. That was a miracle. That was a miracle. All these disciples, some of them are not educated, but yet as God utters his spirit through their tongue, everybody there heard the gospel being preached in their own language. That, my friend, is the purpose of the Holy Ghost, to heal the broken heart. Some of y'all are broken right now. You're going through some, some terrible times in your life and some difficult days. Those who are watching, perhaps you have some trauma in your life. You got loved ones who are sick, suffering from COVID-19, all kinds of illness. You're brokenhearted. Maybe relationships have been fragmented. The Holy Ghost is designed to heal brokenhearted people. Anybody ever been brokenhearted before? Lift your hand way off you are. I can raise my hand, both feet. We've all been broken. But thank God the Holy Ghost is a mender. It will mend the brokenhearted. It will put the pieces back together. And next, to preach deliverance to the captive. Preach deliverance to the captive. Preaching is not just for preachers. Preaching is for those who are reachers. All right? If you drop the P off preach, it says reach. A pastor hadn't been called to preach. You have been called to preach. You've been called to reach, to preach deliverance, breakthrough. Preach those who are bound, deliverance. As a matter of fact, the word salvation simply means deliverance. We are delivered from the snares of the enemy. To preach deliverance to the captive, those who are bound by the enemy, held hostage in, in the chains of the enemy. Demons have grasped them with all kinds of vices. They can't get loose. They're tied with all kinds of chains. And we are designed as believers in Christ with the Holy Ghost and power to bring deliverance to those who are captive, those who are jailed and held, amen, tied down by the enemy. That's your job, saints. Keep on shouting. Keep on dancing. Keep on speaking in tongues. Keep on running around the church. Keep on falling out and rolling. But at the end of the day, we got to bring deliverance to a world that's bound, held captive by the snares of the devil. And if we are not doing that, we're not doing the work of the church. We're just doing church work. Oh, hallelujah. We got to bring deliverance. Our world is suffering and the church is sitting back watching the world go to hell. We've got to use the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall what? Cast out devils. The Holy Ghost gives us power to cast out demons. Take the devil by his neck and shake him loose from those who are bound. Take every demon spirit in your household that's ravishing your family your, your household, on your job. We got power to bring deliverance. Saints, we got to use that power. The Holy Ghost is designed for us to bring deliverance to those who are captive. You got loved ones and family members who are captive. You got co-workers and neighbors who are bound by the enemy. Your job as a believer is to bring deliverance. And recovering of sight to the blind. Men's eyes are closed. They're blind. They can't see the truth. 
we have to reveal the truth through God's word to those who are not, are not believers. Recovering. Notice something. Recovering. That means they once saw. They once were in the, in the light. Recovering. That means they had it once before. That's why David said, renew the right spirit within me. God wants to bring us back to Eden where we had sight when Adam sinned. The Bible says his eyes were open. In other words, he saw now himself as a frail, sinful, dirty before God. He, he hid himself from God. He was yet seen, but he was still blind. He was blind. That's why Jesus came through 42 generations, that we may see again God in his glory. Adam had a relationship with God one-on-one. -on -one. They met in the garden every morning. But when Adam sinned, their relationship was fragmented. And man could no longer come before God's presence in the state that he was in. Matter of fact, the Bible says sin was so much that it stunk in God's nostrils. Even Moses, as blessed and as powerful he was, he could not look God in the face. <laughs> so you think you can do the same thing in your sinful state? you got to come through Jesus. That's why Jesus died, that he could be that buffer or that mediator between man and God. And once we get to heaven, we'll be able to see God in his whole glory. But right now, we can't see God in his total glory. Because we are in this sinful nature, and yet Christ represents God through his Holy Spirit. Can y'all see that? Through the Spirit of God, we see God through the Holy Ghost. And last but not least, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Men are hurting. That word liberty, it means to be set free. To set at liberty or to set men free that are bruised, hurting, bound by the demons of hell. Can't find themselves loose, but they're bound. Romans chapter 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, sickness, pain, agonizing frustration, infirmities. Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Helper, the Pericles, the breath of life, the Spirit, the, the pneuma, the word pneuma, the word pneumonia comes from that word pneuma, breath. When people have pneumonia, they have problems breathing. God helps us breathe. He helps our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. Watch this here. You can't pray right. You can't find the words to pray. The Holy Ghost, the helper, the Pericles says, it make it intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When you can't pray and don't have a word to utter, the Holy Ghost kicks in and prays for you. The songwriter says, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took a little time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. But I'm, I'm glad the Holy Ghost prayed for me. I'm glad the Holy Spirit prays for me. When I can't pray, the Holy Ghost prays for me. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity, or it helpeth our weaknesses. That word infirmity means weakness. Some of us have areas in our lives where we're weak. You can write down on a piece of paper all the areas in your life that you're weak in. As a matter of fact, that's a homework assignment. Write down on paper everything that you're weak in. That's your homework assignment. That's for you and you and you alone. Write down the areas that you are weak in. Just jot them down. If you never ask God to help you in those areas, you won't get help. People are like, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to just wait till God move. You've got to make your request known unto God. If you're weak in some areas of your life that are holding you back from obtaining the place where God wants you to go, the Holy Spirit helps your infirmities. It helps your weaknesses. 
That's what it's for. It make it intercessions for us when we pray with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Holy Ghost prays for you. Yes. I thank God for the Holy Ghost praying for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. I'm reading in the English Standard Version says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. The King James Version says, There is liberty where the Spirit of the Lord is. You are, you are liberated. You are free. You're not bound by the enemy. You're not in a chokehold. Come on, somebody. But where the Lord is, the Spirit of God, the Lord is, there is freedom and there is liberty. Notice something. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 14. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in what? Other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice something. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. Notice something. They were filled. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Those disciples were filled. And when they were filled, the Bible said they began to speak in other tongues. Now, when you go to Mark chapter 16 and look at the Great Commission where Jesus told the disciples, he says, uh, These signs shall follow and believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. Well, he says in those scriptures, he says, uh, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believe and baptize shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be what? Damned. He says, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Notice that. Mark chapter 16. Go around verse 15, 16, and 17. They shall speak with what kind of tongues? New tongues. Your old way of talking, your old behavior, your old language. That's why it's important to understand when the Bible talks about tongues, it talks about tongues in various different dimensions. It's not just unknown tongues. It's not just new tongues, but it's also other tongues. Unknown, other, new tongues. And when the church body understands what the value of tongues are in its proper place, we won't get caught up in this religious platform of thinking the only way folk know we are saved is because we speak in tongues. There's a lot of hell raisers who speak in tongues. There's a lot of demons. There's a lot of adulterers, fornicators, wine bibblers who speak in somebody's tongue. So that's why the devil knows what tongues are. He knows the true tongues and the false tongues. I thank God for the true Holy Ghost tongues that come from the unction of the Holy Spirit. The devil knows the value of tongues. Matter of fact, the Bible says when the disciples and apostles were sharing and preaching and folk were getting delivered and set free, being saved and filled, the Holy Ghost came and they began to speak in tongues. Simon the sorcerer, worked rich, a witchcraft worker, Try to buy the tongues. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. There are folk making money off the tongues. They, they got a class on how to speak in tongues. Pay X amount of dollars, go to the back room. We're going to teach you how to speak in tongues. The devil is a lie. You can't teach the saints how to teach, uh, speak in tongues, but God utters through his spirit. No, no, no. Tongues come from God. And when the Holy Ghost begins to use you in tongues, you will know, and the church will know, that that's God speaking. I get tired of folk interrupting the service on their own agenda and want to tie the service up and speak in their own tongue. And then go sit down like they've done something. Sit yourself down and let the Lord speak. 
Don't you open your mouth just to utter, you want to say something, you want to be seen because you think you got a gift? That ties a service up when you want to run the service and speak in your own tongue. That's what Simon wanted to do. I believe in the Lord using folk in the, in the ministry. I believe in the fivefold ministry of the church. I believe in the gifts operating. But when somebody is in yourself, want to just take over and open your mouth and just utter what you want to say, I can say hook him in the side, coming in the Chevrolet. But when the Holy Ghost moves, everybody is blessed. The preacher's blessed. The media team is blessed. The choir is blessed. The music, I've seen God move through tongues that the organ player jumped off the organ. The drummer dropped the sticks. The guitar player put down the guitar. The choir members came out of the choir stand. The pastor on the floor rolling because when the Holy Ghost begin to move. It sets folk who are bound free and, libera and liberated through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has power. It has purpose. And it has a purpose in your life. So when they begin to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Purpose of the Holy Ghost. Purpose of the tongues. Or the power of the Holy Ghost, should I say. It gives us power, first of all, to cast out devils. Speak in new tongues. If we drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt. I mean, if the devil is trying to sabotage you, it won't hurt you. If you pick up any deadly thing, amen, you're not going to die. It gives us power. That kind of power is God's kind of power. Dunamis power. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. For those of you all who are perhaps you've gotten saved and you're struggling with some things. The Bible says, do you not know that you are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwell in you? Verse 17 says, if anyone destroys God's temple, that's your body. God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. As one pastor says, I think the New International Version says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? God wants to dwell in this temple. And during this pandemic season, the churches have been shut down and has not been a massive number of congregants gathering to worship under one building because of COVID-19. But that's okay, because right where you are, you are the temple. You are where God wants to reside. You are the temple of God. The songwriter sang the songs, we, your people, give you glory. Come and dwell in this place. Come dwell where? Not in the building. Not at 3904 Front Street. Not at 1511 Macon Boulevard. Not at 411 Confluent. No, he wants to dwell in, inside of you. You are God's temple. That's where the Holy Ghost wants to reside. He's not just flying around in the air aimlessly. The Holy Spirit wants to dwell in you. That's why the Bible says, Repent, be forgiven of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Man, I'm getting excited about this Holy Ghost and power. It's for the believer. It's for you. It's for you, you, and you. Now get ready to hurry to a close. Make sure you recognize the fact that your body is God's temple. You can't destroy your body with all kinds of vices, things that destroy the flesh, destroying your body. You know what things are to destroy your body? You can't put in your body things that will destroy this temple. God said, you break down this temple and God would himself destroy it because you are the temple of God. I'm God's temple. In his presence, there is peace. In his presence, there is joy. I will linger. I will stay in his presence day by day until his likeness can be seen where? In me. Yeah, in you. You're the temple. You the temple. You see, in the Bible days, you notice something. When, when Jesus says in chapter in Luke chapter four, 
the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Notice something. It's upon me. He didn't say it was in him. He said the Spirit is upon me. And yet when you read the scriptures in the Old Testament, we read where the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Samson, when he was being attacked by the Philippines, he said the Lord says, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Notice something. All those prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Now Jesus himself is still on earth, still residing, walking as a man. And he declares and says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. But guess what? In chapter 14, he says, don't be weary. We read the scripture every time at the funeral, at the funeral service. He said, I'm going away. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Neither be afraid. In my father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't not so, I would have told you. I'm going away to prepare your place. That where I am, there you may be also. He said, I will leave you another comforter that will abide where? In you. Come on, Holy Ghost. No longer is the Holy Ghost upon us. It's in you. I know we sing the song, let the presence of the Lord rise upon me. I understand that song. It needs to rise. But he wants more so to reside. Olden days, the Holy Ghost came upon them. They were rejuvenated. They were ready to they were ready to go out and battle. But when Jesus left and went to glory, he told the disciples, the same way you see me going, I'm coming back in light fashion. He said, But I'm sending you another comforter, another helper. Who am I talking to? You've been going through some things. God wants to help you, but you got to have the Holy Ghost not just upon you. It needs to be in you. How do you receive it? Lord Jesus, I open my heart. Give me the full pie. I don't want just a slice. I don't want half of a pie. I want the whole pie. I had some pies for Thanksgiving. And oh, they were delicious. They were good. Sister Jackson cooked some good pies. But guess what? I didn't just want half the pie. I wanted the whole pie. Even though I couldn't eat the whole pie, I had to share it. But I want the whole pie. I want God to give me all of him. All of him. The Holy Ghost. Not just being indwelled. But not accept Christ as my Savior. I want to be filled to the top. And when I'm going through these trials and these uh, days of testing and even Jesus was led by the Spirit to be tested. Notice something. He was led. Jesus, the man, the Son of God, he was led to be tempted into the wilderness. He was led by whom? By the Spirit. So you're going through temptations and trials? Ask God to come in and to fill you up. The songwriter sang the song, fill me up. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. I want the Holy Ghost to fill me up. You, my friend, right where you are, begin to ask God to fill you up with the Holy Ghost and power. Fill my cup, Lord. Let it overflow. Fill my cup, Lord, with your joy. Fill my cup, Lord, with the abundance of joy. That out of my belly I'm so full that out of my belly will flow with rivers of living water. Fill me up, Lord. Until those around me, it began to spill over into their lives. Friend of mine, your job as a believer is to ensure that you do what Jesus says. The Spirit came for me to bring deliverance, to set those who are bound free, heal and mend the brokenhearted. Amen. Set those who are captive at liberty. Give them freedom. Speak life to those who are dead and to bring fulfillment to those who are poor. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, Father, who am I talking to tonight? I pray for those who are listening tonight who don't know Christ as their Savior. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You may have confessed your sins, but you need the Holy Ghost. The same Spirit that saves you is the same Spirit that will fill you. The same Spirit that saves you, the same Spirit that will fill you. More of God.
less of you, more of God, and less of me. I decrease that Christ may increase. And I pray, God, that you will save the soul that is near as hell. Fill every believer with the Holy Ghost. Because the gift of the Holy Ghost is for believers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen again. I can preach this sermon all night about the Holy Ghost. I can talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can talk about the signs of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. But I got to end my topic tonight and let you guys go. But before we close out this broadcast tonight, you can be a blessing to West Urban Ministry by giving and sowing a seed. Keep praying for the saints that God will heal, deliver, and set free. All over this country, people have loved ones that are suffering, but yet God is still in the healing business. On your screen, you can see methods of giving. Look at the screen. You can give through various means. You can go to uh, the West Irving Church dot org and give from there on our website locate the donate button button and go from there you can give tithes offerings sunday school etc etc you can go to givelify and you can give on our givelify app just find west urban church of god in christ or you can scan those barcodes on your uh, phone on your screen they call those qr codes just scan that code. It will lead you right to a giving a giving platform. Or you can give the old-fashioned way. You can drop your gift in the mail at the West Irving Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 842, uh, Bedford, Texas, 76095. Again, thank you for your gifts, for those who are sharing. May the Lord bless your gifts tonight and give you abundance and increase. In Jesus' name, amen and amen again. Tomorrow night, uh, we have Bridge and Sunshine Band. I thank God for this social media platform. It has kept us connected. Uh, it has kept us connected. And uh, so tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, join the Bridge class, ages 12 through 14. And then at 7 p.m., join the Sunshine Band, ages uh, 1 through 11 at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, Saturday Sunday School at 5 p.m. Again, thank you for sharing the night with us. Our time has come and gone. And from Sister Jackson and myself, we love you all. Keep us in your prayer. And don't forget, the purpose of the Holy Ghost is for you to be a blessing and a witness to those who don't know Christ in the part of their sin. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time. Be blessed.